11th of December, day 11 of our 24 days of random awesomeness. And uh, as you see, it became cold and snowy. Time to check out our bag, today's bag. The bag of the 11th of December, 2020. Um, as I showed already yesterday, it's a little bit smaller, but um, quite interesting, I think. Let's open today's bag and uh, have a look what we got in there today. And uh, yes, as I remember correct, we have multiple things today to show because I thought one might be a little bit boring. So um, I have to put this, I will take out everything first, um, but I have to put it in a way you, don't, you can't read what's on there. Um, next one would be uh, this. Let's put this here. And uh, next one will be, uh, should we use this? Yeah, I think this will also be the first thing I will show you because it is quite obviously, and uh, well, it's not really, you don't really know what it is, but I think there was something else in here. Yeah, there are two more things, this and that, and that it is for today's bag. Let's put this away. Now, what do we have today? Well, First, let's start off with this because you're probably asking yourself, what the heck is this? Now, um, I need this for that, put this here. What is this? Well, again, this is a prop we made for a movie um, a while back, I think two years ago. Um, I can't tell you the name again, unfortunately, but I can tell you what happened with this thing. Well, there was a special task force uh, unit and they had to get into a vault or a kind of a bunker with a big fat door and that was uh, closed shut. And there was a, um, a panel on the outdoors, uh, you know, like a coat uh, panel, a uh, number panel, and uh, some red LEDs uh, showing that the lock is locked and um, they needed a device to uh, decrypt the actual, you know, to trick out the electronic circuit of that door to open it. And then um, they needed some sort of a device, you know, um, a movie device that they can hold there and then uh, it, do, it does its magic thing and then the door opens. Now, um, if you have seen my video about the um, ultimate ghost detector, that was quite the same time uh, we built this because uh, if you have seen the video, you recognize the shape of this thing because actually the ultimate ghost detector um, is based on the same uh, housing than uh, this unit. Now, um, this is by the way laser cut. Um, it's made out of wood. Um, the cover plate is made out of uh, acrylics and as you can see even like the screws There are not real screws, but they are simply engraved into the acrylic just to give it a little extra nice look and uh, We have two buttons here a status button uh, a Scan mode scan mode button and a frequency button which of course have no real purpose uh, But there are nice blinky lights and a display here in the middle Two old uh, antennas, I think they came off an old uh, Wi-Fi or router or router. And uh, a little button on the back side. This is basically for the actor. You're not supposed to see this button. This is a reset button that resets the unit so it starts its thing all over again. And uh, I made this in a way that um, these uh, cheap eBay battery packs, they fit in here and there is a USB plug in the end. And when I stick this in there, um, it plugs right into the USB and powers it up. Now let's try this out. I will stick this in here. I have to stick it in the right way, of course. There we go. Now um, I hold this button pressed, so um, you see it is now in the reset state. So um, the moment I, um, yeah, I re release this button, it will uh, boot up. So on camera, wait, on camera, it will be look. It looks like this, and when I release the button. Um, there is a sweet sequence that starts and you see or you see maybe you see nothing Well, that's maybe because yeah, because the contrast actually this I used um, to adjust the contrast of the display What can come in handy when you are shooting and uh, you maybe have to adjust this now when I release the button now you see it turns on initializing scanning uplink fetching data and now it encrypts the door code and there we have the door code and did it the door is open 
And we also built the, the other part on the door, that panel, um, so you had a little remote control and you can switch the red LEDs to a green one and the moment this display becomes green as well. And you see now it says access granted. Uh, now it goes to the sequence again. Let's reset it and let's watch it one more time. So you see initializing, scanning, uplink, fetching data. And um, yeah, it, it goes pretty quick because they wanted it to be very quick. They don't want it to see too much detail. So it's just a little gadget that they had in the movie. And I love those gadgets. It's like, you know, a James Bond thing, something nobody has. And, a, you know, a special task force kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, let's put this on the side because we go ahead and um, have a look on the other uh, props. Where should I put this? Should I put this here? I should put this here and leave it running for now so we have something blinky in the corner. Now, what else uh, should we start with? Let's start with this small thing. Um, very little small container uh, of some sort of a tan powder in there. Now, what is this? Well, this is something I bought in the States. Um, you get it in some special effects stores or online. And uh, it comes in handy sometimes because it is a very easy to do effect and it's, um, it looks quite okay for what it is. Um, let's uh, open this up and you see you have a little tan or dark brownish powder. And what we do is we put a very tiny amount of this stuff on skin. In this case, I use the back of my hand. This is already way too much. And I close this up to not spill anything of it because it is messy stuff. Now we rub this in to your skin until the powder disappeared. And uh, of course on camera um, you can be a little bit more rough because you don't see it. I mean I can barely see it with my eye but you probably cannot see it on camera. Looks a little bit dirty. Also, my, my hand is a little bit messed up for now. Uh, let's grab a knife. Let's grab a knife. This is a uh, this is a rubber knife, of course. Let's grab a knife. Let's grab some tap water. And uh, usually we would have uh, we call them blood knives or they are called blood knives. Um, so they have a little squishy thing here, and down on the blade there is a little opening, so the blood can come out there. But sometimes you have props, and uh, let's say it can be like a rubber knife in this case, or a real knife that got uh, that is completely dull or something. And um, yeah, what we do is uh, we moisten this thing up. And this is an effect, um, this is for a very short shot. This is not to show in detail, but it's like in a fight scene and uh, you need to see that somebody gets sliced open. <laughs> um, we can try this. Now we have a, a very nicely moist knife and I can now cut open my hand. And I can cut it open in multiple angles and multiple times and just, uh, yeah, you see. and. Well, I mean, you know, it does not look like good fake blood does, but it works. It gives the impression and it does what it's supposed to do for a very short, for a very short take. Now let's try, try to get rid of it because this stuff is very potent. It is a very high um, concentrated uh, pigment and it stains everything. So try to get rid of everything here and uh, this will even be still on my skin tomorrow. <laughs> even, yes, I take a shower every month. Um, but uh, yeah, it is a, quite, a, quite a potent stuff and a very, uh, yeah, very high concentrated pigment. But a very nice, easy effect, very quick to do if you, have a, if you do a short movie or something and you just need this. Now, that's that. Next, what should we do? Should we do this? No, let's, let's do this first because this, that needs a little bit of time to dry. This needs to be dissolved. Now, what is this? This is a quite interesting stuff. You, you can buy this, uh, uh, not the exact product. You know this um, ice spray you get to um, frost up your windows? That never works actually. Well, um, this is the professional version of it and that one works. Now, um, let's grab a, a brush and a, a piece of, uh, well, I use plexiglass right now, but of course, um, real glass would be best. Um, I don't have any real glass for now. 
let's how should we do this let's let me move some stuff off the bench so i can put this somewhere okay i will put it on here now what is this well as i said this is some sort of a uh, of ice effect icing effect for windows and you see it's crystallizing already and it's uh, full of yeah it makes a lot of mess but it looks quite good so we need a brush and we brush it on here I will just make a little spot here a little corner brush it on and uh, yeah let, let this dry and this will create a quite nice frosting effect and as I said you get this in a spray can and this stuff never works at least not for me or it does not look right somehow but this stuff does and uh, funnily it smells like an old bar <laughs> an old wine barrel um, quite interesting now let's close this back up it's a bit messy and uh, for now you don't see much I mean uh, you see it's just a little foamy uh, we leave this to dry um, I did this now very quickly usually I would take more time to do this uh, also to um, make sure it uh, it is thick enough because for now it could be that this is a little bit thin but it should still work and still make some sort of effect and uh, on the other hand it is also quite cold in here so it might take a while to dry but we go over to the next item in the meanwhile I will put this I will put this away somewhere here yes let's take a look at this stuff and um, well this stuff uh, I'm keep it I, I try to keep it short because you know this stuff um, you get this at Walmart nowadays it is uh, Insta Snow, Insta Snow powder. We use this to uh, create uh, snow slush that you have on the side of the street. Um, it is basically mixed with water. It thickens up because it is a super polymer that absorbs uh, enormous amounts of water and becomes, um, yeah, dry almost. It, it almost looks like uh, snow and with enough water it looks like snow slush. Uh, we do add pigments to this to make it a little bit more grayish and uh, and you simply throw this in the water and uh, we do use uh, concrete mixers when we do this on a big scale and uh, that's why we get this in pretty big amounts usually at Walmart you get a little can and it's called insta snow and you open the can you put a little water in there and um, you know the, the snow will uh, overflow the can even I just put in a little bit now I will um, mix this in and uh, this needs a little bit more time than the Walmart stuff and that's basically just because uh, we order this in bigger amounts and uh, we don't we have the time of waiting a couple of minutes to thicken up we don't need this to um, happen right away so in this case this also gets a little bit cheaper now uh, let's wait a minute until this is dry and what should we do next we still have this one um, should we do this right now because this probably will take another while to dry but um, well eh, nothing happened yet uh, I could put this on a radiator you know what I will put this away for now because um, for the next thing uh, I don't want to damage this I'll put this over here get rid of the battery now then let's move over to this or is this oh this is thickened up uh, what should we do now? Well, let's do this first because we already started with it. Now um, you see that the water got thicker and thicker and now you see it becomes some sort of slushy. Now it's still a little thin, we can add a little bit more of this stuff, but uh, I don't want to add too much because else we will get snow or some sort of snow. Um, I can show you this, I already have made some beforehand um, this is like uh, yeah this is like fake snow this is the same stuff but more uh, powder to water ratio so we would have our snow nice and fluffy by the way we have over 20 sorts of artificial snow this is just one of it uh, this is as I said you know this stuff you get it everywhere nowadays as a little fun thing but um, it looks okay um, it would not work for a close-up uh, close-up shot for example for a pack shot when you have something like this sitting in some snow and you need to make a really nice close-up of this this stuff would not work with it would not do the job 
Um, this here as a snow slush um, works pretty well. Uh, I should leave this here and let's put some, let's put a little slush around this thing. And I may make a big mess here on my bench because it's almost Christmas. And uh, yeah, you see this is way moister, moister, more moist <laughs> than the other stuff. And this basically really looks like snow slush. It feels like snow slush. Um, it sounds like snow slush. And it becomes all red because my fingers are still full of um, fake blood powder. So you see, this is a nice snow slush effect. As I said, uh, you can mix paints in there or pigments to color it and uh, it looks quite realistic when lying on the side of a road because it looks really like snow slush. Now I cleaned the bench and that is because I want to show you the last item and I need a little bit of space. Now uh, this is only a sample, uh, I filled it inside this plastic container um, just to show you what is it. Let's open this up and um, let's have a look. What is it? Well you see it is a yellow powder and uh, well this is uh, called Lycopodium. I don't know, I'm sure some of you already heard about Lycopodium, other may not. Um, this is mo well, mostly used, um, well scuba, drive, uh, scuba divers use this stuff um, in order to get into their, um, into their neoprenes. It is some sort of a dry lubricant, uh, a very very fine powder. It basically, these are pollens from the burlap uh, plant. And uh, you can order the stuff, uh, it does not fall under any sort of uh, dangerous good or whatever because in this state, in my hand, it won't be um, flammable. But um, as most powders, um, so as flour or coffee creamer, uh, when you spray this uh, into the air and the mixture of oxygen and powder is right, uh, it can ignite and it will ignite. Uh, and this stuff is very potent um, to do this because it is quite an oily um, kind of uh, powder. Um, it is very, very fine and it also behaves like a liquid. When I put like um, a whole container of this on the bench and I would poke a hole in the side, it will uh, run out like, uh, like a liquid would. So um, very interesting stuff. Now what can we do with this? Well, um, I have to move this candle over for that. Uh, let's sprinkle some in there. You see, it makes a nice little fireball. Quite nice effect and also it smells, well it smells a bit of burnt hair. Uh, <laughs> but the nice thing though is first of all, well as I said, it's not flammable um, in a solid state or in a uh, compact state and uh, let me grab this spatula again but uh, it is very potent when um, you create an aerosol with it and uh, the other thing is that um, this stuff burns at a quite low temperature so uh, imagine you would blow this uh, in the air with uh, some sort of air cannon uh, you would produce a huge well, a huge cloud, of course, and when you ignite this, this creates a huge fireball, which is not as hot as using other chemicals, I would say. So, um, a nice, um, nice stuff to produce um, close proximity effects, for example, with stunt people, uh, when they have to be blown away by a fireball or something. So, because the other nice thing is this stuff um, does its thing, it creates a big fireball with some black smoke, and after that it's out. There's nothing else burning. Uh, there's no uh, burning residue on the ground as with other chemicals. Let's do a last one with a little bit more. And let's hope that the camera survives. There we go. But um, you can burn your fingers quite well with this stuff, of course. Let's have a look at our uh, plexiglass that I, uh, that I prepared. Here, wait, here we see it starts drying and now you see that it also starts crystallizing out and you see that we get some nice uh, thick crystallized or iced icing effects. Um, of course, I could go ahead and spray this onto there so you don't have that, that hard edges. Um, it would be way softer and blurred. For now, these are, this was a quick thing, but you see especially up there where the, where the lights are here, it's nice and blurry and um, in addition to some snow and ice that surrounds uh, the window 
it would give a very nice promising effect. <laughs> Yes, but this was a quick thing. But you get it. You see, um, you see how it looks about. And um, yes, it's a uh, nice stuff we uh, often use in studios and stuff like that, depending on uh, uh, on uh, the ice effect they need. All right, I think this was basically it. This was a quite a long video. I'm uh, yeah. So, uh, let's let's have a quick look of uh, tomorrow's video. Maybe I used a little bit too much of stuff today. Uh, yes, we have a mid-size to big bag, quite heavy, I would say like, well, three or four pounds and a single piece. Yes, let's put this away. And, uh, and I wish you a very nice uh, evening. And um, yes, I will uh, probably play around with some more fire. And I see you tomorrow. Until then, see ya.